In this video, we're going to look at static electricity. Static means not moving, stationary. And that's because we're going to be talking about when charge builds up on a material and doesn't travel through. When charge travels through a material, you have an electrical current. But when the charge stays in one place, you have something called static charge or static electricity. Please do these questions in your exercise book now. Pause the video while you do that. Press play once you're ready. You should have now done these five questions. Please mark those five questions. Pause the video while you do that. Press play once you're ready. These are all, these are all ideas that we've already studied, which you need to understand to move on with today's topic. So first, I'm going to talk about charge buildup and how we get this phenomenon called static electricity. So whenever two materials are rubbed against each other, so let's imagine we have material one. So this is material one, let's call it material one. And material two, uh, let's say material two is some kind of cloth, that's material two. So this is some kind of plastic. And this here is some kind of cloth. When we rub those materials against each other, there will be friction between those materials. And that friction causes electrons to move from one of those materials to the other. Now, you don't need to know off by heart which material will lose the electrons. You'll always be told that information. But the important point is that because of friction, electrons will move from one material to the other. So let's say in this example, the electrons move from here to here. So I'm going to use the symbol E for electrons. So there's an E. Let's make that smaller. And here's another E. So those electrons are moving from the cloth to the plastic. Now, if electrons are leaving the cloth, well, what charge do electrons have? Say your answer to the video. Electrons have a negative charge. So if they leave the cloth, what does that leave the cloth with? What kind of charge? Say your answer to the video. So the cloth here will be left with a positive charge. What about the plastic, the thing that's gained the electrons? What's that going to gain? What kind of charge? Say your answer to the video. The plastic will gain a negative charge. So the idea is because of friction, electrons leave one material, and go to the other. The material that loses electrons, so the material that loses electrons, that one gains a positive charge because it's lost negative charge. And the one that gains electrons, that one gets a negative charge because electrons have negative charge. So that's how the charge builds up. So now both of these materials will have a charge build up. One will have a positive charge buildup and one will have a negative charge buildup. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is attraction and repulsion between charges. So just like with magnets, which you may have already studied, charges attract and repel. And the rules are very similar to the rules for magnets. So if you have something with a positive charge and something else with a positive charge, those two things will repel each other. So these are force arrows that I'm showing. They are going to repel. What we say is like charges repel. So that also means if we have a negative charge and a negative charge near each other, what will they do? Say your answer to the video. They will also repel. Why will they repel? What's the reason for that? Say your answer to the video. So often people don't know how to say that. They just say, well, they repel because, you know, they repel. But the, the way that you should always explain why positive charges repel from each other and why negative charges repel from each other is with this sentence here, like charges repel. That means charges which are the same. So like means the same. So charges that are the same repel. And if you have two charges which are oppositely charged, so if you have a positive and a negative charge, they will attract. So they will be pulled towards each other. And the way that we explain that is we say opposite charges attract. So in summary, I've talked about how static charge builds up on substances. 
I've said that the electrons travel from one substance to the other because of friction. The material which loses electrons becomes positively charged and the material which gains electrons becomes negatively charged. But there is one more thing to say. Notice I chose cloth and plastic. What kind of materials are cloth and plastic? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said that cloth and plastic are both insulators. What is an insulator? Say your answer to the video now. An insulator is something that doesn't conduct electricity. Now, insulators are the best things at building up static charge. Because if you had a conductor, the charge wouldn't be able to build up because the charge would just move through the conductor. So static electricity builds up on insulators because it can build up on the surface of that insulator and it won't flow through the insulator. Whereas a conductor, because it conducts electricity, it will allow the charge to, fill to, it will allow the charge to flow through. So there will therefore not be this buildup which you need for static electricity to happen. So we're going to do an example now to really understand this better. So pause the video to read this example. Press play once you're ready. You should have now read this example. You might want to have a go at it before I go through it. So pause the video to have a go at it and press play once you're ready. So you should have now had a go at this question. So let's have a look. So the woolen cloth is rubbed onto the acrylic rod and the electrons transfer from the cloth onto the rod. So as I said, they'll always tell you which way the electrons go because you're not meant to know that off by heart. So the electrons have gone from the cloth onto the rod. That's important. So firstly, what force is responsible for the electrons tra transferring? So you should have said friction. State the charges of the cloth and the rod after the electron transfer. Well, if the electrons have transferred from the cloth, that means the cloth has lost electrons. So the cloth will have what kind of charge now? Say your answer to the video. The cloth will have a positive charge. So the cloth will be positively charged. And what about the rod? The electrons have transferred onto the rod. So what will be the charge of the rod now? Say your answer to the video. You should have said that the rod will now be negatively charged. Question C. So we do the same thing again with a different cloth and a different rod. And now we bring those two woolen cloths close to each other. So let's think about these two woolen cloths. So I'm going to draw a diagram of them. What charge does this cloth on the left have? Say your answer to the video. Well, you should have said positive because of the previous part of the question. What about the other cloth? What charge does the other cloth have? It also has a positive charge because it was also rubbed against the acrylic rod. So we've got two cloths, both with a positive charge. So what will they do? Say your answer to the video. They are going to repel. But notice what the question says. It says explain what will occur. The reason ex the word explain means why. What's the physics behind that? So what do we need to say to explain why they repel? Say your answer to the video. So we need to say because like charges repel. Let's have a look at question D now. You might want to pause the video and have another go at it if you got question C wrong. Press play once you're done. You should have now had another go at question D if you originally got question C wrong. So let's have a look. So we've got the acrylic rod being brought close to one of the cloths. So what is the charge of the acrylic rod? Say your answer to the video. The acrylic rod has a negative charge. What is the charge of the cloth? Say your answer to the video. The cloth has a positive charge. So what will they do? Say your answer to the video now. They will attract. And the explain part, what do we need to say? Should have said because opposite charges attract. So we're now going to look at some effects of static electricity. So simply electrons transfer from one insulator to another. The one that loses the electrons becomes positive. The one that gains the electrons becomes negative. But because of that, we get some effects. So you may have received before a static shock or an electric shock. Things that people often get electric shocks from are trampolines 
shopping trolleys, car doors, things like that. And the reason why people get these static shocks is because, let's take the example of a trampoline. If somebody is jumping up and down on a trampoline, there is a lot of friction between the trampoline and them. Same with uh, a trolley. If you're pushing a trolley around a supermarket, there is a lot of friction between the trolley and the ground. Because of that friction, charge builds up on the material. So let's say here is a trampoline. As a physicist, I like to draw diagrams using dots and squares rather than trying to draw detailed drawings. So here's my trampoline and there is a charge built up on that trampoline because somebody has been jumping on it. So there's this negative charge built up on the trampoline. Now that trampoline is an insulator, so all that charge is built up in one place. Now, if somebody comes along and now touches that trampoline, so if they come into contact with it, they provide a path to the ground for that charge to travel through. So if this person, I'm going to stretch their arm in a very non-realistic way, if that person touches that trampoline, that charge will travel through them to the ground or to the earth. The charge gets earthed. Now, there's more to that explanation. For that charge to flow to the ground, well, what do we call a flow of charge? What's the proper physics word for a flow of charge? Say your answer to the video. You should have said a current. To get a current to flow, what do we need? Say your thoughts to the video. Well, to get a current to flow, we need a potential difference. We need that push. We need a potential difference. So the full explanation here is not just that, well, the charge wants somewhere to go, so it flows down to Earth. No, there is a potential difference between the trampoline and the person. So as the person moves their hand towards the trampoline, there is a potential difference between their hand and the person. So over here, between them and the trampoline, there is a potential difference. The person and the trampoline will not have the same charge. They have a different charge because there's a buildup of charge on the trampoline, whereas the person, there's, there's no buildup of charge. Let's say it was the person who'd just been on the trampoline. They might have both built up charge, but they would have built up opposite charges. So the trampoline would be negative and the person would be positive. So there'd still be that potential difference. And it's that potential difference which pushes the charge through to the ground. So to write a full explanation of this, so as the person brings their hand towards the trampoline, there is a potential difference between the person and the trampoline. So the charge flows through the person to ground. So literally, electrons jump across the gap. So if we really zoom in to the surface of the trampoline, so here's the trampoline on this side, and here's the person on this side coming really, really close with their hand. It's a very bad diagram of hand. There can be a very small gap between the trampoline and the hand, but electrons will jump across that gap. So the electrons jump across the gap. And if you could really look very carefully and, and zoom into what's happening, if there were enough electrons, you'd see a very tiny spark. So there is a potential difference between the person and the trampoline, so the charge flows through the person to ground. Uh, and that's what a static shock is. Now, lightning is this effect on a massive scale. So imagine you have clouds in the sky. So here are the storm clouds. And here is the ground. And the storm clouds, there's a big buildup of charge. So a big buildup of charge. Once the potential difference between the clouds and the ground is big enough, you will get a flow of charge down to the ground. And that's what lightning is. There's a lot more to what lightning is than that, but as a basic understanding of what lightning is, it is very, very similar to static shocks. It is 
charge building up in the storm clouds. There's a potential difference between the storm clouds and the ground. So that charge travels through the air down to the ground. Notice the electrons are jumping across air. The lightning is traveling through air. Air is normally a, is it a conductor or an insulator? Say your answer to the video. Well, air is normally an insulator, but once the potential difference is high enough, the charge can be forced through that insulator. So let's have a look at an example. Pause the video, try the example, press play once you're ready. You should have now tried this example. So let's have a look. We've got a person becoming negatively charged while bouncing on a trampoline. They touch a metal door handle to go back inside and receive an electric shock. So let's imagine this. So we've got the metal door handle. So let's just kind of draw a door handle. And here is the person's hand. Let's try and draw a better drawing this time. Still not great, but it will do. So this person is negatively charged. So their hand is negatively charged. They come close to that metal door. So what's going to happen? Well, electrons are going to jump across this gap. So the charge is going to discharge through the door and then travel down to the ground. So to put that into words, there is a potential difference. So you start with that. There is a potential difference. I'm going to write it out properly, not just PD. There is a potential difference between the person's hand and the door handle. So electrons travel from the hand to the handle and to the ground. You could say that the charge is earthed. That's another way of saying it. The charge is earthed. Pause the video to mark your work. Press play once you're done. So here's another example. So this is a, a demonstration that you might have seen. So you have a person and here's a person and they have their hair. So we've got somebody with nice long hair here. And there we go, lots of hair. Da, 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 da. And you get a balloon and you rub that balloon against the person's hair. And what happens is the hair stands on end. And I want to explain why that happens. So the reason why that happens is, well, you're rubbing two things against each other. So what's the force involved there? Say your answer to the video now. So you should have said that there is friction. Friction between two insulators causes what to happen? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said that electrons move from one to the other. You don't need to know off by heart which way it happens, but in this case, the hair loses electrons to the balloon. So in this case, the electrons, electrons move from the hair to the balloon. So that now leaves the hair with what kind of charge? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said the hair will be positively charged. And what about the balloon? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said that the balloon will be negatively charged. Now, if the hair is positively charged, you've got individual strands of hair, each positively charged. So every strand of hair is positively charged. Now, if every single strand of hair is positively charged, what force is going to be experienced by those strands of hair? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said a repulsion or they're going to repel each other. So every strand of hair is positively charged. So every strand of hair will repel every other one. And what's the explanation we need to give to explain that? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said because like charges repel. 
So that's the idea. You rub the balloon against the hair, electrons move from the hair to the balloon, so the hair is now all positively charged. So every hair repels every other hair because like charges repel. Here's another example. So this time we're going to look at a charge object with a neutral object. So let's say we were to now take that balloon that we rubbed against the hair. So do you remember what charge the balloon had at the end of the situation? Say your answer to the video now. So the balloon was left with a negative charge. Now, if I bring that balloon close to, uh, let's say, a ceiling. So this is another really famous demonstration you could do with static electricity. So here is the ceiling. Now, the ceiling is not charged at all. The ceiling is neutral. And I'm going to bring this balloon and I'm going to take it to the ceiling. Ooh, like this. Now, what will actually happen is that balloon will stick to the ceiling. But how can the balloon stick to the ceiling? The ceiling is not positively charged. The ceiling is neutral. Well, what happens is this. At the surface of the ceiling, the electrons at the surface of the ceiling get repelled from the negatively charged balloon. So the electrons at the surface of the ceiling, which I'm representing as a negative symbol, will get repelled slightly. So those electrons are going to get repelled away from that balloon. And that's going to leave the surface of the ceiling overall positively charged. So the reason why charged objects can stick to neutral objects, so you could stick this balloon to the ceiling, you could get this balloon to stick to the wall. You could actually bring this balloon close to someone else's hair and it would bring that hair uh, towards the balloon, the hair would actually stick to the balloon. You could also uh, bring this balloon close to a stream of water coming from a tap and the water would bend towards the balloon. The reason why that happens is because the electrons at the surface of the neutral object will get repelled slightly by the balloon, which means the surface of that object is now overall positively charged. And that means the positive and negative charge will now attract, so the balloon will now attract to the ceiling. Let's think about the same situation, but this time imagining we have a positive object. So let's imagine we have a positive object. So we've charged up some object, it's now positive, and we bring it towards a neutral wall. So as we bring that positive charge towards the neutral wall, what do you think will happen to the electrons at the surface of the wall? Say your answer to the video now. Well, you should have said that the electrons at the surface of the wall will be attracted towards this positively charged object. So these electrons are going to be attracted to the positively charged object. So what's that going to do to the surface of the neutral wall? So the surface of the neutral wall will now be more negative. And that means that the surface of the wall and the charged object will attract. So it doesn't matter the situation. If you bring a charged object, whether it's positive or negative, towards a neutral object, they will attract. I'm just going to summarize. So if you bring a negatively charged object, like this balloon, towards the neutral ceiling, the negatively charged balloon will repel the electrons at the surface of the ceiling, leaving the surface of the ceiling overall positively charged. So now the negative balloon and the positive ceiling will attract. And if you bring a positive object like this one towards a neutral object, the positive object will attract the electrons at the surface of the neutral object. And therefore the surface of the wall is now overall negative, which will attract to the positive charge. So putting all of that together, try this example here. Read the example, have a go at it. You could rewind the video and have another watch of the examples before trying this example. Press play once you're done. You should have now done this example. So we're now going to go through it. So firstly, explaining why the hair will stand on end. So you've got to go through the whole process. You've got to say every single step. So why will the hair stand on end? So every hair is positively charged. So they will all repel each other. 
Again, notice that in the question there is this keyword explain. So what do I need to say to finish off this answer? Say your answer to the video now. You should have said because like charges repel. Question B, so this is a really great demonstration. It's one of my favorite demonstrations in physics. So the balloon is brought towards a stream of water and the stream of water bends towards the balloon. This genuinely happens. The two things don't touch. The balloon doesn't touch the water, but the stream of water genuinely bends towards the balloon. You can find videos online of it. So for example, if, if here was the tap, so here's the tap and you've got water coming out the tap. So the water comes out the tap and it actually bends towards the balloon. It's actually quite amazing. So why is that happening? Well, the balloon is left with what kind of charge after being rubbed against the hair? Say your answer to the video. You should have said a negative charge because the hair was left with a positive charge. So the balloon has a negative charge. So when the balloon's brought close to the stream of water, the electrons at the surface of the water closest to the balloon will do what? Say your answer to the video. You should have said the electrons at the surface of the water closest to the balloon will be repelled from the balloon. Because negative charge electrons, negative charge balloon, like charges repel. If the electrons at the surface have been repelled from the balloon, what does that mean about the surface of the water now? What charge will the surface of the water now have? should have said that the surface of the water will now be positive. If the surface of the water is now positively charged and the balloon is negatively charged, what's going to happen? So you should have said, therefore, the water and balloon will attract. Because, what's the last bit here? Say your answer to the video. You should have said because opposite charges attract. Now, throughout all of these examples, you'll notice the only things that move are the negative charges. And that's a really crucial point about static electricity. It's only the negative charges that move. It's only the electrons that move. There's no positive charges moving, there's no positive ions moving, and there's definitely no such thing for this topic as a positive electron. Sometimes people make that mistake. They talk about positive electrons moving. No, 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 no positive electrons. Every single electron in the universe is negative. It's only the electrons that move. It's only the negative charges that move. But if negative electrons move away from somewhere, that place that they've just left is left with a positive charge but there's no movement of positive charge. That's really, really important. So what are the charges that move during static electricity? Say your answer to the video. The charges that move are negative charges. It's the electrons that move. So here's the final example, the Van de Graaff generator. So this is a really famous static electricity demonstration. So there is this over here, which is a kind of a uh, wheel that goes round and round and round. It's made of some kind of fabric and it rubs against the metal dome at the top. So this is the metal dome and charge builds up on that metal dome due to friction. So because of friction, charge builds up on the metal dome. Now in reality, in real Van de Graaff generators, the charge that builds up on the metal dome is positive. Um, but just to make things uh, easier, I'm going to pretend that the charge that builds up on the metal dome is negative. Uh, and a few demonstrations can be done. So the first demonstration that can be done is a person can actually touch the metal dome, but make sure that they're standing on a platform so they're completely insulated from the ground. So they stand on a platform, so they're insulated from the ground, so no electricity can flow through them. They touch the metal dome, and what happens is they become charged just like the metal dome, and their hair stands on end. And their hair stands on end for exactly the same reason as the examples we looked at before. So when the person touches the dome, so the person touches the dome, 
their hair stands on end because every single one of their hairs will gain a negative charge so they'll all repel each other because like charges repel uh, another example you can do is just putting a load of objects on top of the metal dome so you could put a load of let's say um, metal cups uh, or like little baking trays so a whole big pile of metal cups so a metal cup and then there's another metal cup on top of it and another metal cup on top of it and another metal cup on top of it and you power them all up on top of the van der graaff generator you switch on the van der graaff generator and they all fly apart they all fly off in different directions and that's because again they all gain a negative charge so they all repel from each other what if i were to replace these metal cups with polystyrene cups. So polystyrene is an insulator. Pause the video, say what you think will happen, press play once you're ready. So you should have now had to think, and a lot of people say, okay, so the metal cups will fly apart because they all gain the charge and they repel each other. Uh, but the polystyrene cups, people think, won't repel each other because they won't build up the charge. Because they think, well, metal's a conductor and the, the polystyrene's not. But that's completely not true. Insulators are actually the best things at building up this charge. So when you put a whole pile of insulators on top of this metal dome, they will all gain this negative charge and they will all repel each other in the same way. The final thing you can do is you can bring this smaller ball, so it's another metal dome, close to the big metal dome. And this is actually earthed. So this is actually connected to earth through the earth wire. So when you bring this metal dome, the smaller metal dome close to the big metal dome, you actually get sparks crossing across from the from the big metal dome to the small metal dome. Um, and that's because um, the electrons are all building up on this metal dome. They've got nowhere to go. So they're building up and they're building up and they're all negative and they all repel each other and they all want somewhere to go. And you bring this smaller dome towards the bigger dome and suddenly there is a path. You get a spark just like with the static shocks that we looked at earlier. So when the smaller dome is brought close to the large dome, electrons will cross the gap as a spark. You actually see a physical spark. If you do this demonstration in real life, you actually see a flash of light um, due to the potential difference. So there's a potential difference between the highly charged big dome and the neutral small dome due to the potential difference uh, and the electrons will pass to ground through the earth wire so without thinking too much about potential difference in current just thinking about the electrons electrons are all negatively charged so they all repel each other so they don't want to build up all in the same place all together the, the repulsion between them is going to grow and grow and grow the more electrons you cram onto this metal dome. So as soon as you give them a path so they can get further apart from each other, they will go down that path and they end up going to Earth. So when the smaller domes brought close to the metal dome, you get a spark, electrons jump across the gap between them. They don't even need to be touching. They can just be very close to each other. And the spark will jump through the air and the electrons will pass down through to Earth. Pause the video, try this example, press play once you're ready. You should have now had a go at this example, so let's go through it. So the first question, when a pile of metal cups is placed, what happens and why? So the metal kit, the metal cups will all repel. Will all repel each other and fly apart. As like charges repel. So every single one of the metal cups will gain the same charge. So I'll put that as well. So every cup gained the same charge as the metal dome. Let's do question B. So the answer to question B is exactly the same as question A, except we're talking about polystyrene cups. So the polystyrene cups will all repel and fly apart as like charges repel, since every cup gained the same charge as the metal dome. For question C, the smaller Earth dome is brought near to the dome of the Van der Graaff generator. What happens and why? 
So that's the explanation that we wrote up here in red. So pause the video to mark your work. And you should have now marked question C. And then finally, the teacher stands on an insulated platform, puts her hand on the dome of the Van de Graaff generator. Why does her hair stand on end? So that's the answer that we put over here. So every single hair gains the charge the same as the metal dome. So every single hair will repel every single other hair because you need to add that final explanation. What's that final thing you need to add? Because what? Say your answer to the video. You should have said because like charges repel. So those are some examples of static electricity in action. We're now going to do some independent practice. Pause the video to do these questions. Press play once you're ready. You should have now done these five questions. Please mark your answers. Press play once you're ready. You should have now marked those five questions. Please now do these five questions. Pause the video while you do that. Press play once you're ready. You should have now done these five questions. Please mark the questions. Press play once you're ready. You should have now marked these five questions. Please do these last five questions. Press play once you're ready. You should have now done these five questions. Please mark the five questions. Press play once you're ready. You should have now marked these five questions. So in this video, we've looked at static electricity. We've looked at how static electricity builds up due to friction and electrons moving from one material to another, leaving the material that lost electrons with a positive charge and the material that gained electrons with a negative charge. We've looked at how like charges repel and opposite charges attract. We've looked at various phenomena which are due to static electricity, such as electric shocks, sparks, hair standing on end, neutral objects being attracted to charged objects, and the Van de Graaff generator. I hope this video was useful. Please like and subscribe to get more videos on GCSE physics.